Are you ready to step up and lead in the education world, but you're worried about nailing that crucial interview? Well, in today's episode, we're going to share with you five strategies as well as five key questions that you need to be prepared for and ready to answer. So grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes. This is going to be a good one. And we're starting right now. Hey, everybody. Gordon Amerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And again, on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further, faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episodes or content. All right, everybody, welcome in. Today, we're going to talk about educational leadership, and we're going to talk about leading, leading in the context of running a school site, leading a department, and even leading a school district. And what I want to do is I want to leverage my expertise, my experience, and some real nuggets that hopefully are going to help you as you prepare for your next interview, as you prepare to take on greater levels of responsibility. If you're just thinking about how to increase your leadership capacity, those are going to be built into to today's episode. Uh, and so it's going to be really important as you are thinking about an interview, we're going to give you some questions, some, some broad based leadership questions to think about. I'm also going to give you some scripted kind of ideas, some verbiage that you can use that you can use as a template to build on to giving your answer. That's going to be tied to your experience, tied to your expertise, tied to your, uh, steps that you've taken along the way. But we want to give you some starter language, some starter narrative that's going to be helpful on some questions that I know are important questions that you'll need to be able to be prepared to answer because these are the same exact types of questions that I'm asking our educational leaders and our educational aspiring educational leaders. So get ready because we're going to start with question and strategy number one. All right, everybody, as we think about and consider question number one, it always is important to remind ourselves that at the very beginning of an interview, and this question that I'm gonna lay out for you is in fact likely one of the first questions, if not something that you can incorporate into your opening, you'll think about how you incorporate it after we after we share it and talk it, talk it through with you a little bit. But remember, at the beginning of the interview is when you are the most nervous, it's when your heart rate is the highest, it's when your breathing is the most erratic, it is when you feel most uncomfortable. So if we think about ways to nail the beginning and you have a solid opening, a solid foundation from which to build on throughout the interview, your level of confidence will increase. Your level of comfort in the room will increase, which will then let you project, which will let you exemplify who you are, your skills, your talents, your expertise that you really want them to be able to see and notice about you. So let's talk about question number one. And so question number one is, why do you want to be an educational leader? This is an important question. It might not be asked as that simple. It may be woven into a multi-part question, but I think it's important that you have a broad-based frame of reference to think about how you tackle these types of questions because it can come in a number of different ways. So let's talk about what a sample or potential response could be, or at least the start of one that you can then expand on. And so a sample response would be, I'm passionate about education because I believe it has the power to transform lives. You know, my desire to become an educational leader stems from a deep commitment to making a positive impact on the academic and personal growth of every student. And having worked at various levels in education, I've seen the profound difference that effective leadership can make in fostering an environment where students and staff and faculty alike can thrive and excel. My goal will always be to bring my experience, my enthusiasm, and my vision to further enhance this impact. So that's a frame that you could use. It's like the, it's like the chassis of an engine. And you can build on top of that and you can expand and you can give it your own flavor. You could give it your own kind of spin. But talking about things around your enthusiasm, your passion, what you've seen along the way and how it's impacted your leadership style and how it's impacted your philosophy and your vision for how education should go is really important. And we'll talk a little bit more about leadership style and philosophy because that's also gonna be one of the questions that I want you to think broadly about. But when we tackle these types of questions, 
And when you think about it, not only in the context of an interview, but even as a practicing educational leader, that's always about the first thing you should be focused on. It's always about how am I setting the environment? How am I setting those conditions? Who am I in this space as I lead? What am I bringing to the table? My passion, my enthusiasm, my experience, my knowledge, my expertise, my strategic thinking, like thinking through that, not only in the context of the interview, but then also in the work, when you actually go out and do the work, if given the job, what are you gonna do, right? And so we're gonna talk about these things throughout our time in this particular episode. So that's a sample, again, to respond to the question, why do you want to be an educational leader? That should not ever be a question that comes as a surprise to you. Be prepared to respond to that. As a matter of fact, if given the opportunity, layer that into your opening. Don't even let it be a question they have to ask, but literally share that with them out the, at the outset. It's gonna be an important strategy. And again, as you talk about why you wanna be something, why you've aspired to be in this situation, that lets you start to talk about yourself in a way that's gonna lower your anxiety, it's gonna lower your stress, and it's gonna put you on a little bit more comfort level to then be able to tackle the rest of the challenging interview process. So question number one, why do you wanna be an educational leader? All right, let's move to question number two. And question number two is, tell me about your leadership style and philosophy. Tell me about your leadership style and philosophy. Another opportunity, again, I don't know where each individual institution may put these questions and what sequence it might be, may, whether it will ask you to layer this into your opening, but these broad-based big ideas, I personally, I can't speak for every superintendent, can't speak for every educational institution, but I am looking for folks who can articulate their vision, what they believe, their values, their, their, their EQ. The IQ is somewhat expected, but also when I say IQ, like the technical aspects of the work, the technical aspects of the job, I feel deeply that those are skills that we can teach leaders. We can teach you to crunch data. We can teach you to disaggregate information. We can teach you to design strategic plans and uh, instructional units and professional development sessions. We can teach you that. Well, what are the intangibles? What are those, what are the nonverbals? What's the visionary perspective? How do you enter a room? Your level of confidence, your level of perseverance, your level of resilience. Those are things that are not necessarily teachable, but I can tell you more and more clearly to me nowadays is that we need leaders who have high levels of EQ, who can deal with the rigors, the challenges. And in some cases, unfortunately, the attacks that we have to take as leaders on decisions that we make, positions that we have, challenges to some of the norms and some of the status quo that we may feel. We have to be prepared to be able to do that. So teaching somebody how to read a spreadsheet, teaching somebody how to crunch numbers does not prepare them to be able to dialogue, debate, deal with somebody who may have a differing opinion, may have a differing value set. So we're really looking for those intangibles. And so when we think about a question like, tell me about your leadership style and philosophy, that's what we're getting at. So let me give you a sample or an example template that you can build off of. So a sample response to that question could be, my leadership style is rooted in collaboration, transparency, and empowerment. I believe that an effective leader listens more than they speak and they recognize the unique strengths of their team and of their community. My philosophy will always center on building strong relationships, setting very clear expectations, and providing the support and resources needed for staff and students to excel. I strive to be a leader who inspires trust and encourages continuous learning and innovation within my team, within my school, and within my community. That's, again, a sample that you could build off of, layer in your expertise, layer in your experiences, the things that you've seen, the things that you've been a part of, 
tailor make that, but that gives you some things to, to think about. Because when we talk again about your style, your philosophy, what the, in, what the organization's always gonna be looking for is, okay, how does that style, how does that philosophy, how does that dovetail, how does it connect? How does it align with who we are and what, we're, what we need, what we're looking for or what we need? What do we need at ABC Elementary right now? What do we need at XYZ Middle School right now? Does this leader's philosophical beliefs and values and experience align with what we need, right? And that's gonna be an important piece. So you wanna convey that in a clear, engaging, and very, very powerful and impactful way. So being able to demonstrate your leadership style and philosophy, that's question number two. All right, question number three. Question number three builds off of the first two questions are all about your, your style, your approach, your persona, high levels of EQ. So question number three is all about how would you foster a healthy and vibrant school culture or department culture? So getting at, again, what type of environment are you, do you want to create? Do you want to create an environment where your students and your staff feel empowered, where they feel excited, they're happy to be on campus, where people who work in your department are happy to come to work to execute on the strategic objectives that you've laid out? How are you fostering that culture? And so we think about in the context of responding to that question in an interview, here's something that you could consider as a sample response. And that goes like this. A healthy and vibrant school or department culture is built on mutual respect, open communications, and shared goals. To foster this environment, I would focus on creating strong community ties. I'd focus on celebrating diversity and encouraging a sense of belonging amongst all of our stakeholders. Initiatives like feedback loops, professional development, team building would also be integral to my leadership by prioritizing people's wellness and em emphasizing recognition. I aim to nurture a culture where everyone feels valued, respected, and motivated. So when you think about how do you convey who you are, what you believe, it's all about sharing your perspective, your values, and your vision. And it's really important, not only in the context of the interview, but also the practice to be a practitioner of leadership, to exemplify things around collaboration, mutual respect, open communication, feedback loops for dialogue, right? For, for, for pro process improvement and continuous improvement initiatives, being open to those discussions and that dialogue. It's all about creating that vibrant, healthy, encouraging and invigorating culture. That's what we wanna shape. So think about that question and think about how you layer in your knowledge and expertise and strategies as well. And that's question number three. All right, now let's jump into question number four. We're gonna pivot a little bit because we're gonna pivot now to a little bit more of a technical aspect, the technical perspectives of the work. And so question number four is, how do you effectively supervise and inspire staff performance. Now this is where the rubber meets the road, if you will, because one of the core tenets of leadership is the ability to lead, supervise, and engage and employ performance. To be able to have the productive conversation that will stretch, grow, and develop an employee, and in some cases, to be able to share with them why a different path or different opportunities may be in their better interest. They may be best suited for a different organization or a different role within your organization. But this is a core leadership skill. So when you think about conveying that to the interview panel, you think about conveying that to any leadership group that you're talking to who might be thinking about interviewing you, here's a sample response that you could share with respect to this question. Effective supervision involves setting clear, achievable goals and providing the resources and support needed to meet them. I inspire performance by leading by example. I will always maintain high standards, 
and I will show genuine interest in the professional and personal development and growth of my staff. Regular check-ins and constructive feedback will always help me to identify areas for improvement, but also the opportunities to celebrate successes. Empowering staff by involving them in decision-making processes also drives engagement and innovation. So thinking about the dynamic responsibility of supervising and leading people is been again about talking about like the technical aspects of making sure that you create the right space, you have the right systems, you have the right in information, you have the right abilities to be able to provide the right feedback at the right time for the right person. And conveying that to a panel is an important technical skill that you'll draw upon because that technical prowess of being able to lead people is core to your ability to be successful as a leader. So you think about, you put that into practice. It's the ability to listen well. It's the ability to be vulnerable and hear feedback from your staff as you're leading them. If they give you clues, if they give you hints, if they give you a roadmap to how to better support them, how to best uh, engage them, you wanna leverage that. You wanna listen and be responsive to those types of things. And this will help you not only in the interview process, but also as a practitioner. And that's question number four. All right, so before we move into question number five, share with me in the comments below, what are the types of strategies and the types of practices you would put in place to effectively supervise employees and effectively supervise staff if given the opportunity? Share that with us in the comments below, and let's move to question number five. All right, question number five. This is an important one because this is going to take and put everything we've talked about into a tangible, actionable framework. So question number five is this. If you get the job at this school or in this department, what will you focus on in your first 90 days on the job? Now, this is a big, broad question, but what we are trying to get at is we wanna know what you will do how you're coming into the environment. What types of things are you thinking about? What types of strategies do you wanna employ? Who do you wanna to talk to? What do you wanna focus on first? We really want you to flesh that out because now we've gotten to a point where we wanna vision what you look like in the role and what that will be in the first 90 days of you being in the role. So as a sample response, you could say something like, in my first 90 days, my primary focus will be on building relationships and understanding the unique challenges and opportunities within the school. I plan to meet with faculty, staff, students, and parents to gather critical insights and feedback. Simultaneously, I will work on aligning the school's goals and actionable plans that reflect the community's needs. Initiating a few projects that can deliver quick wins is important for building momentum and establishing trust early on in the organization. And you can synonymously take out the word school site and you can put in department or you could put in district, but the strategies of engaging a wide range of stakeholders and really getting senses for what the unique challenges and opportunities are in, the, in that organization are gonna be crucial. And then identifying a couple of opportunities, a couple of things that you could do, a couple of levers you could turn quickly to get some quick wins and build some trust and build some capacity and start to share what that environment is gonna be as you, uh, as you serve as the leader is gonna be critical for building those bridges with the staff. Because building trust is critically important. And so as we think about how do we build trust, how do we do that in a tangible, critical way, it's building on our leadership capacity. And so you wanna always vision out how you're gonna do that in the interview context, but how, how you'll also do that as a practitioner. And if you want more about that, you can check out this video that is focused on building your natural skills and talents and abilities that will help you shine in your next leadership interview and in your next leadership job. Check that video out and we'll see you on our next one. Be well, everyone.